Hello people, welcome to my channel Physio Guide by Divya. Today I am going to teach an important topic that is muscular dystrophy. What is first of all, what is muscular dystrophy? It is a group of hereditary, means from families to next generation. It transfers the disease, it transfers in which the muscle fibers are usually sustained to damage. Okay, muscle fibers are damaged mostly. From the name only we can identify muscular dystrophy. Okay, we are identifying myopathies, means uh, disease of the muscle in which progressively what, what happens progressively there is degeneration and wasting of muscle occurs okay dystrophies is divided into three types that is congenital means from birth onwards this dystrophy occurs uh, next is genetic means hereditary from parents to next generation next is metabolic means by change in the cells uh, uh, cells which produce energy so the pain weakness and fatigue is seen Next we will see epidemiology means how much uh, females are, males are more affected means males are more affected in this uh, muscular dystrophy than females. Next pathophysiology how the disease progresses okay so, step by step. Firstly if there is deficiency of the dystrophin protein this process starts from here deficiency of dystrophin protein. Why this deficiency occurs due to defect in the XXP221 gene which codes with the dystrophin okay it does not code with the dystrophin it uh, there will be def uh, there will be deficiency of the dystrophin protein okay now loss of the properties uh, after this deficiency there is loss of properties of the skeletal muscle cell membrane okay the dystrophin essentially to why this dystrophin is used means this is to maintain the properties of skeletal muscle cell membrane okay for cell membrane this prop dystrophin pro protein is mainly important okay next cell breakdown will happen as a result due to deficiency next release of all contents of the cell in serum in blood in serum next death of the cell if there is death of the cells there will be necrosis of the muscle muscle cells also okay next uh, the patient feels weak and dystrophied muscle is seen as a result there will be elevated increased serum creatinine phosphokinase levels in the blood okay this is the process due to deficiency of this protein the step by step process is now classification it is divided into classified into three types x linked recessive autosomal uh, dominant autosomal recessive X linked recessive means in this it is there are two Duchenne's uh, muscular dystrophy, Baker's muscular dystrophy. In autosomal dominant, it is FSH means facio scapular humeral uh, muscular dystrophy. Autosomal recessive means limb girdle muscular dystrophy. Okay, these are the types in this. First, we will see Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. What is it? It is the most common type of muscular dystrophy. This is seen mostly and 50% it affects mainly males and 50% are females are carriers means they don't affect uh, for them it don't affect but they carry from them to next generation. Okay, so males are mostly affected and mutation rate mutation rate is higher than in any other X linked hereditary disease. This accounts for about 50% of sporadic calls means uh, this uh, it occurs occasionally in few places. This uh, does not occur mainly, it occurs occasionally. Next uh, clinical features, incidence means once in one in 3000 males, uh, it 3500 males, male births, it is seen in one person. Okay. Now clinical features, symptoms, what are seen in, the, in those patients means delayed early motor development muscle development is delayed noted in one and three years of age followed by there will be scoliosis scoliosis contractures and loss of ambulation means they can, can't walk okay at around 12 years of age and pseudo hypertrophy increased lumbar lordosis okay Lord, lumbar there will be increase in lordosis okay Next, thoracic scoliosis also is seen. Cardiomegaly. There is short, short of hip flexors and lengthening, uh, widening of hip extensors. Okay. Next, ventilation is affected. Breathing pattern becomes poor in them. In them. 
sometimes uh, this larynx and pharynx muscles also are affected and mostly the proximal muscles are affected than distal means upside muscles are mostly affected than distal okay the goer sign means the child cannot climb stairs or raise from the lower chair and when uh, when he attempted he raised suddenly like like climbing him up uh, suddenly he raise up now muscle weakness this is a most common features iq level is less than other child okay 15 to 20 percent less than the normal child okay now most of the patients with this duquenne muscular dystrophy die by age of 20 years only because the symptoms appear at the 3 years next it becomes it apparent by 6 years ambulation is lost means they cannot walk by 11 years they will be in wheelchair by 15 years next to the patient die by age of 20 years if they are not treated well investigations now investigation uh, how to identify emg electromyography to rule out any pathological actions any infection to see any infection type serum test serum test to find any if there is any elevated cpk level next uh, muscle biopsy we need to uh, we need to show to find any uh, findings we can do this muscle biopsy treatment prednisone this slows the progression progression of the disease up to 3 years it slows the disease progression next uh, life ex- expectation has raised up to 30 years they can live with the use of the surgery to correct scoliosis and action of any contractures are there they can correct by themselves death usually occurs from respiratory insufficiency if there is respiratory insufficiency death may occur most of the treatment is symptomatic means based on the symptoms okay cicus muscular dystrophy this is rare than muscular ducan muscular dystrophy that this is more common this is rare okay it next one facio scapula humeral muscular dystrophy it's a autosomal dominant disorder it occurs in one one or two it occurs in one or two people in the one lakh members okay means uh, most common is duquenne muscular dystrophy next uh, baker's uh, muscular dystrophy next to facio scapula muscular humeral dystrophy okay they walk like camel backed gait okay now examination how to examine this check the vital pulse rate bp respiratory rate temperature and consciousness need to be checked by gcs scale that is by sensor motor okay cranial nerve examination gait bowel and bladder movements need to be identified next physiotherapy management this is the main treatment need to be given first counseling must be done startingly uh, so that they will be first mentally stable next chest care breathing exercises breathing exercise postural drainage if any postural drainage and percussions of chest assisted coughing need to be taught to be to clear the chest secretions okay coughing those all uh, techniques need to be followed here next clothing clothing need to be loose and light weight next postural correction okay spine must be kept under continuous review as there is any progress scoliosis may develop this can be problematic the patient okay. lightweight orthosis that is thoraco lumbar sacral orthosis need to be advised if scoliosis is developed a pad call a pad can sometimes be introduced to correct the position by placing it on the side of the thoraco lumbar sacral orthosis scoliosis can be corrected by surgery also meanwhile next lifting lifting sliding boards can be used to lift or patients parents we must advise the parents to uh, lifting positions okay pa- parents need to be taught how to lift the child okay next exercises exercise first of all pnf technique should be benefit for the affected muscles strengthening exercise should not be done uh, starting only all daily living activities like feeding dressing toileting should be encouraged for the patient by himself only to do them himself uh, next active rom exercise should be encouraged to raise we need to raise the height of the bed chair and toilet so that the movements from one place to other is raised the movement also is raised and okay stretching and splinting along with, along with the exercise only the parents must be need to taught how to stretch 
like the hip and hip knee legs hip knee tendocalcaneus foot first need to be stretched next shoulder elbow wrist next to be treated the range of movements in ankle can be maintained by passive stretching and splinting splinting like pop night splints or by afo day splints day on this can be used only night this day or night okay correction of hip flexion through prone lying position that is 20 to 30 minutes a day in a good root position over a wet c feet dorsiflexion next recreation like daily activities need to be corrected uh, we need advise them to do by themselves next family education is very important okay prolongation of ambulation so as long as they walk by themselves on their feet the incidence of contractures and spinal deformities are less okay so we should encourage them surgery and orthosis surgery consisting of a percutaneous stenotomy gait it must be learned to they can learn balance and walk on the lorotic position without using stick we must advise them to walk without using stick or a walker the standing chair is also beneficial in preventing contractures and allowing supporting standing okay now wheelchairs walking becomes more difficult with or without any stick we can go for a wheelchair exercises starting exercises based on the improvement of the treatment we need to change the uh, treatment okay based on their activities okay i hope you understood this topic thank you for watching this video